I guess the project was really sparked by an anxiety that I had at the beginning around whether or not there was space for us um, and time for us to experience boredom anymore in a context where um, you know, boredom has been constructed as enemy number one and where we're constantly being told that if we download the right apps or subscribe to the right feeds, we'll never have to feel boredom again. And so the project was sort of sparked by this anxiety, but what very quickly became apparent to me the moment I started to scratch the surface of, um, you know, internet culture in general, um, is that boredom is everywhere in a digital network culture. One of the big things I'm trying to think about right now is the impact of the coronavirus pandemic and the subsequent lockdowns. Um, those have been incredibly interesting in that a lot of the same anxieties and concerns that I'd been looking at as sort of really marginal phenomena for the most part suddenly became part of the mainstream and the public. And so there's this, um, this uh, question for me about how boredom has become a kind of defining one defining experience of the pandemic. I started looking at TikTok, um, be, you know, in the in the context of the the first lockdown, um, and I'm really interested to look at how um, it's helped to really define the cultural moment and to visualize a kind of bored public. So I'm trying to think about what it means not to be bored um, as a private individual, but what it means to be bored in public with other people. My talk will start by looking at and reflecting on some of the content that I have previously analyzed. And I'm hoping that um, it will generate a wider discussion about how we as media scholars can attend to these ethical questions in our own research. So what does it mean for me as a media scholar to code um, human behavior um, and to classify it and to sort it into patterns? Because of course we do that too as media researchers. A key ethical question of my research is, um, what does it mean to speak on behalf of these bored bodies? You know, what does it mean to give amb ambiguous moment a specific value? Um, and how can how can we do justice to you know the full fullness and the amb ambivalence of um, what is being uh, disclosed in these moments of self exposure or these you know intimate moments um, without really you know doing violence to them by reducing them and um, uh, pinning them and fixing them down is definitely not driven by some of the classic standard approaches to ethics in an internet context, but comes more from a you know more phenomenological or anthropological tradition, um, where you're really sort of attending to you know this lived the ambiguities and you know the the full phenomenological richness of lived experience. And for me, you know that's how I that's how I sort of um, approach and think about ethics. I was working with a group of um, young creatives, um, the Chelmsford Young Creatives, and um, they had to stop what they were doing. And so I said, look, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to do a co-creative project where you are going to, um, uh, you're going to construct a creative response to what to this experience of um, you know what it means to be young and bored uh, in the context of, of the lockdown. We spent a long time thinking about boredom and what it was and like you know looking at boredom on social media but then we uh, did this experiment where we used different social media platforms as closed spaces to reflect on boredom. So we kept boredom diaries on TikTok in order to reflect on what boredom means in the moment, you know, to create this more reflective um, space within platforms that really don't prioritize that, you know, so um, we did that. And um, what emerged out of that was something like this kind of like um, board collective where like, you know, boredom was the thing that drove these, um, these creatives together and um, they, you know, uh, in their evaluations talked a lot about how having that sort of shared space to talk about what boredom meant in that moment was, you know, just really important for them. And the second thing that came out of it was an open letter to local uh, councils and uh, government representatives um, for funding for youth-based projects. So, you know, I think that's definitely where I would um, see the sort of impact coming from from, from the research is trying to um, train students to think about 
boredom and to use social media and to learn that social media platforms can be used in all sorts of different ways. I see TikTok research as being, you know, an area that's like a particularly interesting and rich space for future um, research around post-digital intimacies and uh, for studying boredom. Um, and that has to do, I think, I mean, for a lot of, for many reasons, but one, one, um, one particular reason might be the way that it has this distinctive architecture where its algorithm is built not on who you know, but what you like. Um, and um, that I think has the potential to raise a lot of really interesting questions around the kinds of intimacies and ethical relations that might be fostered um, through this kind of particular type of social algorithm that, that it's using that is you know, um, new and interesting. Uh,